Okay, well, my name is Glenn Wadstein, and uh, I moved up from the Salmon River Sawyer's Bar, California. I don't know. If it's uh, fairly close by as far as the eagle flies. And uh, I mined most of my life. Mining played a part in my life as far as childhood. And uh, anyways, after uh, years of mining on federal ground, I had pretty well given up. I uh, got done fighting the Forest Service and all the other agencies to be and gave up and uh, moved up, uh, took the last of uh, uh, the money I made mining and moved up to uh, uh, the Applegate uh, McKee Bridge, Oregon. And uh, in doing so, I was going to, uh, to, to make money. I was going to build a, a washing plant to mine gold with that would be cheap enough that a starting miner would be able to afford. And so I built this plant and we needed a place to prove it up. And fortunately there was uh, a group of people that were mining at the Sterling Mine but they, they really weren't doing, they were just kind of playing. But it was a perfect setup for me to test my plant. Well, after testing the plant for the day, we shut off the plant and for the heck of it, decided to pull the ripples and see if we had gotten anything just by chance. We pulled the ripples and lo and behold, gold. And I'm talking nuggets as big as your thumb. So, uh, well, needless to say, that started it off. And uh, I cut a deal with the property owner and we started to get serious about mining. I had a partner at the time, a guy by the name of George Reed. He's since passed, one of the best partners I ever had. And him and I did the mining there for years. And then uh, he eventually went his own way and uh, the price of gold dropped. And so I just maintained the mine on a yearly basis to cover the property owner's taxes. So we'd mine for a couple of days a year and I'd take a loss, but as long as the property owner got his cut and it covered the taxes, it was fine. And the last year that we mined was 2001. That would be, uh, I think, early July 2001 was the last day of operation. It was just for a short couple of days. And then, uh, and after that, the property owner sold off the property and, uh, and I pretty well quit mining. So uh, if she's going to fire off some of this, I'll... I'll uh, kind of narrate these short little clips. You know, mining, it isn't just, it isn't just uh, panning or any of that. There's an awful lot involved. You have equipment that you have to maintain and fuel and weld. It's a whole big operation. And once you do mine, then you have to clean up the gold. You have to separate the gold from the sand and you've got to prep it for sales. And so it's, uh, it's this, uh, this shows early the plant, a couple of the girls we had working for us. And that's the plant that I built. And this is very early on. This is uh, the sometime during the first month of operation. And this is the main box. And then on each side is a, uh, what you call undercurrents. And that gets the fine gold dust. Uh, the main box there is able to swallow a rock 30 inches in diameter. And you don't want to subject gold dust to that kind of deal. So right where those second set of jets are is a punch plate that will drop out the sand and put it in the side currents so that the fine gold will have the chance to drop out. This is where we're right close to the Sterlingville Cemetery and at one time there was a town called Sterlingville and it had quite a few people on it. I've heard in excess of 2,000 people were in that area. And the town had a couple of saloons. It was your basic uh, gold rush town. The Sterling Mine had been in continuous operation since the 1800s, uh, on and off. It, it last main continuous operation was in the 1930s, just before the Second World War. 
And uh, oddly enough, we, we ran into one of the guys that used to mine in those days. And he was a big help that uh, showed me what they did and where they had their plant set up. So this shows the surrounding hills and the road. It's actually, it's a very beautiful area. Where's the mine from that location? Right, a little bit. You see that where that road takes off to the to the left, uh -huh. right over that little rise right here in front of you, uh -huh. is where the mine would be, right on the rise. I got lost back there looking for the mine. Ah, it's to, uh, Griffin Lane and Sterling Creek is the junction. This here will show uh, the ore body and then the overburden that covers the ore body, the ore body being the river rock. And what we, like, what we do is we take off the overburden, we lay the overburden off to the side, take out the ore body, and then put the overburden back where, where, where the, uh, the hole was. So here we are. Taking one of the, we had several cats here to push off the overburden. And then once the ore body has been pulled out, then the overburden gets spread back over to make a fill. And what we've done is we've took ground that was, it was actually kind of a cliff that was surrounded by tailings. And you couldn't do anything with it. And what we've done, we, we dropped the, the elevation of the land to make it mesh with the tailings. We leveled the tailings and spread the overburden over the top of it and ended up with a big meadow. So. Big filing with the stream side people or somebody in order to on on private property. Uh, there's a lot of different rules that, that you have to uh, go by, um, and also the property owner is pretty strict on what what is to be done and not done. You know, he sure doesn't want to be left with a mess, and that's never our intention, anyways. The piece of ground that we're mining right there was. If you can imagine a piece of flat ground with a spine in the center of it surrounded by rocks, that's what it was. In fact, uh, a good example was a couple of frames back, you saw a little piece of ground that looked like a pyramid with a tree growing on top. That's what this would have been, except it was bigger. So that little pyramid was tailings? No, that little pyramid was the actual piece of ground that they didn't mind because they used it for uh, to hold a piece of equipment, so they mined around it. The piece of ground that I'm mining right now, they had a mill set up on, which is why they didn't mine it. But they mined all the way around it. And so it was circled with tailings, and the ground is worthless. You can't do any, you can't grow any, you can't build on it, it's nothing. So once we pulled out the overburden, then, uh, once we pulled out the ore body, then the overburden was spread over all of it, it was leveled, and you ended up with a nice meadow, so you knock down the tailings and uh, flatten them out and put overburden. Exactly, yeah. And those are, that's overburden you're pushing right there. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's what's covering the channel. And the channel is the ore body that we're after. Now, what channel you mean the former channel? The former river. Yeah, yeah, our channel's a million years old. Yeah. yeah. So where's the current creek channel is further downhill from? Oh, it's uh, the current creek channel is almost a quarter mile away. Now you can see the, the little individual undercurrents. Each little thing is adjusted to, to, to slow the water down to let the gold drop and that little punch plate that let, the, uh, that let the gold drop through. And then those are the ra ripples that were made out of small railroad iron. They had to be very tough to be able to take the beating that went through it. So did you manufacture this machinery yourself? Yeah, I built all, all the parts of it and everything. Uh, at one point in my life, I worked for a, a company that uh, was up in the Arctic Circle. And they have a plant called a skid plate. And up in the Arctic Circle, everything that requires fuel has to be flown in and stuff. Well, this particular plant has no moving parts. So it doesn't need to be fueled. It doesn't need to be maintained. You just put water in it and go. That's why they like it up there in the Arctic Circle. You don't, you know. And this big machine here will take the overburden or the tailings 
and it will spread it over an area where we knock down the old time tailings and it spreads it foot foot thick at a time This is a drag line, drag line buckets. What's happening here? Well, this, this particular drag line is feeding the plant. And you're now, you're now in the old river channel. No, uh, that's that's decked ground. We we peel off the old over channel, and we we stockpile it, and we add water to it so that it melts it down. So did you bring water in and uh, and uh, we built trucks? No, we built ponds, okay. and uh, in fact, we built almost a three-acre pond, and uh, it was fed by springs, and it was, of course, seasonal. You know, it, it, uh, it's dry in the summertime, which works out fine because that's when, that's when we clean the pond. So that big hole there, you can see the cat started pushing dirt up there to stockpile for the next day's run. What the, this drag line here was, was feeding this stuff that had been fed the day before. It soaked in water overnight. This shows some of the ponds. So 12 hour soak was pretty much? Yeah, a 12 hour, 12 hour soak melted it down pretty good. Now see, one drag line feeds the plant and the second drag line. In that picture right now I'm seeing Two big pieces of equipment. Yeah. There's a cat just off the side. How many? How many people are on on the job right there? Would you guess? Five. Two operators, two on the plant, and one on the one on the cat. So you need to get out of that five six ounces a day in order to make this thing break even, right? Yeah. The idea is you you have to move the ground, and you you also have to figure that when you're all done mining, that, that, that uh, things have to be cleaned up, yeah. you know? And so that that's figuring the cost. So you've got to make enough money so that uh, your cost of yardage, that you make a profit. And we made anywhere from a 15 to a 30% profit. But of course, it's all dependent upon the world price of gold too. In the, uh, in the middle 90s, boy, the gold just the market just fell out. So this was 86 when the gold was at around 1,200. I think this was 88, I believe. No, it might be 86. But yeah, yeah, gold was 460, something like that, an ounce. And you have to remember that $460 is a lot different than today's $460. Sure. Diesel was 35 cents a gallon back in those days. Glenn, you talked about the role of the guy with the yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, it's going to show, uh, it, it, the plant has to be fed a certain way, we'll, we'll show on that. In the meantime, uh, this particular piece of machinery is backing up over an area that we're making a fill, that at one time had been nothing but large rocks left over from the 1930s and the 1920s. Is that big piece of equipment, can you haul it on the road uh, that's more than eight feet wide? Is that, uh... that has to be low bedded in anywhere it goes. Well, you can see how runny the material is because it just came out of the sluice box. And it takes uh, less than 12 hours for it to stiffen up. And then uh, you can see now he makes a fill and he can put it up to a foot thick. It looks like right there he's late, he made an eight inch, eight inch uh, pad. You owned all this equipment? Yeah, the mine bought it, yeah. We started out with just a drag line and, and uh, somebody's old uh, little old cat. And as we progressed, we, we kept buying more equipment, but now here's where we were talking about. The guy that runs this cannon here, he's not beating up pieces of mud with it. He's feeding the plant. And the guy that, that's ready to drop the, uh, the 
material in the in the plant you can't this this has to last until the bucket comes back again we do about a bucket about every 57 seconds so the guy running the cannon has to make that material last until he comes back again if that material is gone before that bucket comes back and there's nothing washing through the plant the plant will clean itself out and you don't want that to happen what does that mean? so it will actually blow the gold that you've saved out so it's very important the man that runs that cannon actually runs the layout if he doesn't do a good job we lose money so basically that guy is the most important guy on the job so the water going into that lower pond do you recirculate yeah. it and use it to re uh, yeah re yeah the next it's all recycled, absolutely. So there has to be a big pump somewhere. This oh yeah, yeah. We we. Uh, gravity fed from up rivers. No, 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 no. It's all recycled. We nothing gets. We nothing leaves the mine. Well, where where is the coal? You say it cleans itself out. Doesn't where, if it doesn't clean itself out? Where where is it sitting? How do you go get it? It uh, the the gold the gold will be trapped inside the sluice box. That was our talisman. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, that's our talisman. That's a good luck talisman. Good luck, huh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so then... Dead cow. Yeah, right. How do you get it out of the spruce box? Or are we going to see that? Well, you're going to see that. All right. <laughs> now, here I am. I'm starting hey, to... Be here I am. I'm cutting out the channel. And I'm decking it next to where that drag line is digging. I'm decking it so that when they're done with the run, that I can shove it in the hole, they can add some water while the crew is cleaning out the sluice box. And then that stuff will sit for the next day. And we should put between five and 700 yards in that hole. And uh, so here I am, I'm, I'm just putting it. 700 yards? Yeah. That's a lot of material. The machine runs, uh, uh, our, the plant was designed to run about 55 yards an hour. That's about sometimes more sometimes less now you would run this how many hours a day and then you'd sit for a night right yeah um, we tried to get no less than a six hour run in you see you have two hours worth of maintenance while all this equipment this equipment is all very old I, I, this I mean that caterpillar is older than I am mm -hmm. it was built in like 1952 so and the scraper, the same thing with it. All the equipment except the plant was very old. So it required constant maintenance. And we set aside two hours a day for maintenance and then two hours a day for cleanup and stuff like that. So actual operations was about six hours a day. Okay. Was cleaning the sluice box part of those four hours? Uh, part of, yeah. And just you and your partner did that mostly. Uh, well, the the crew did the screening and stuff like that. Uh, the clean the uh, the actual cleanup took place in the lo in the uh, laboratory. That was a quartz vein that ran through the uh, that ran through the pit that further up on the hill, about a half a mile away, the, uh, the old timers had tunneled into it and, and extracted free gold out of it. Uh, in the pit, it, was, it turned into a sulfide telluride thing where it probably carried gold, but not uh, enough value for us to uh, mess with. Quartz isn't a good sign? Uh, quartz is a good host for gold. Yeah. I like to name all my old equipment. That that old dozer there, his name was Christine. If any of you guys have read uh, uh, Stephen King, you would know. And then uh, the one drag line that, that had the uh, skull on it, that was Pam. And then uh, the big rubber tired scraper, that is Old Ugly. Now the 
this? Were they were they relevant, relevant related, or did they just show up? As no, this is what happened. We had some guys working for us, and you know, this is heavy equipment. You you can't be fooling around. You have to be pretty serious about it. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys were showing up. They're smoking pot and they're drinking beer and stuff. Oh, you can't have that. So my partner and I got really angry, and we said to hell with it. And we fired all the men and hired women. <laughs> Hey, they were great, man. My favorite. Uh, the, the responsible, the, thoughtful, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, they were great for the work. We even had a deal where we helped them out with child care. One of the ladies had children. Mm -hmm. And uh, my favorite employee was Pam. She's a redheaded woman. She's the hardest working, great employee, great employee. What did uh, you usually do? I ran CAT and then uh, did all the errands, made supplies and stuff like that. And I laid out the day's work, a foreman, uh -huh. and uh, made my partner do all the physical waiver. <laughs> Is this midsummer? I, I, I see people out there with tank tops. Is oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Generally, the last operation would be uh, first week in July or last week in June. But usually by then, we were off on our other jobs. Were you, did you get shut down then because the, the, the springs dried up? Yeah, lack of water. Lack of water. And, and we, wanted, we wanted the springs to dry up because all the silt, you know, would start clogging the spring. And, and uh, you've got to, you, you can't handle wet silt. There's no way to handle it. Right, right. So you have to let it harden up and then you, then you can handle it. You mix it with your tailings and then spread it over uh, ground that had previously been mined. Um, yeah, it was a long day. Sometimes it was 12, 12 and 14 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in McKee Bridge, this is Sterling Creek, so it was about 20 minutes away. Oh, okay. Not not too bad. But yeah, it, it was long hours. And uh, you know, and you got to do that when it's your own. You know, you do anything you can to make it go. If there was a breakdown or something like that, man, you know, it was time to break out the lights and start welding. Did anybody ever get no, um, we were really, really fastidious about anybody being in any kind of danger. Absolutely, absolutely death on that. Uh, being a former logger, I've experienced, uh, and uh, there's no way that we was gonna let anybody take any chances whatsoever. Everything. Did you take this equipment with you to other jobs? What's that? Did you take this equipment with you? No, to no, that was equipment stayed straight, straight there. Like I say, it was very old equipment. It was just patched together. You know, I mean, we literally had to patch it every day to keep it operating. You know, we we didn't have a lot of money. This equipment that literally came out of junkyards that we put it together and made it run. Did you notice a lot of variation one day to the next? Uh, well, what part of the thing that you were pulling uh, uh, pulling uh, material. material out of? Yeah, um, in, uh, in, in two different ways: in in values and in geology. Uh, you can there were sand deposits that didn't throw any. Uh, What they're doing here, those little square things, those are screens. And he's screening the sand into that trash bucket. And he's looking through to, for any little obvious nuggets. And you know, he'd pick out nuggets and stuff. Uh, this fella here, you're going to see him in a minute. He's taking apart the undercurrents and washing those out. And uh, and then all that will get screened. And all the sand that gets screened is going to go through another process. So, like I was saying, it's just not the mining. There's a whole lot more to just to, to gold mining than there is the actual act of mining. And you have to gear up for it if you're going to do it. 
So he slide out a tray. Everything was made. The whole plant was designed for ease of operation, ease, ease to tear down, ease to put together. But this must have been the fun part. Um, at first it was, <laughs> but after a while it was just, uh, yeah, I mean, I used to get excited when I find nuggets and stuff like that. And, and, and then after a while it was just, oh good, you know, I made payroll, yay. Or, oh boy, we can order up more fuel, you know, that kind of thing. What's he doing? He's, uh, he's unscrewing the screen, and underneath that screen is a carpet, and he's going to wash the carpet out. It's a special carpet designed to trap gold dust. And we would trap gold dust so fine that if you put it on your finger and then wiped it off, you would have a solid gold fingerprint. So he's taking gold out now. Yeah, well, he, he's going through it looking for the little nuggets. <laughs> How big would those nuggets be? Some of them were, uh, the biggest nugget we got was about the uh, size of a golf ball, walnut golf ball, something like that. There we go. There were some bigger ones, uh, but they generally got tore up because of the equipment. Size of kernels of corn? Oh, lots of those. The gold that, that came out of Sterling Creek kind of looked like cornflakes. It was kind of flat. It was really pretty, very, very pretty. A lot of character to it. But uh, back to the to the boring of the clean out. It, it got the clean up got to be so boring. But every once in a while, I'd get a coin, and uh, I got a 1849 dime once. Uh -huh. And uh, the best thing I ever found was a 1793 Spanish real. I got it in a sluice box there in Sterling Creek. And I'm thinking to myself, what the heck is this? I took it down to Rogue Coin, and this is what they told me. Back in the gold rush days, silver was silver. Didn't matter who or where, or where it came from. So that's what you mean by a flake right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show you something here. Who's that? That's me and my big belly. <laughs> Now I'm going to show you something here. This is this special carpet. I'm going to take a little corner of this carpet and I'm going to pan it out. So anyways, let me finish telling you about that, uh, uh, that uh, Spanish Real. It, uh, back in the early days of the, of the gold rush, most of the people on the West Coast were Spanish. So that was the predominant coinage. And even, even after the gold rush for for almost a decade, it, the money was predominantly Spanish, so it was uh, uh, not uh, unusual to see a Spanish real. But also to give some context, uh, 1793, I think, is the year that Marie Antoinette lost her head. Is that correct? I think. You're so casual. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Okay, oh, there you go. There's a hundred bucks worth of gold right there. Where uh, on the left? Yeah, all that top at the top there. It's pretty muddy, uh, but that's that's where the gold dust. Yeah. Is. Yeah, I shook it up in that upper corner. And that's because of its weight. It, it yeah. Pans different in the pan when you slosh the water. Yeah. Plus, you know, I've been panning for so long, I know how to move the gold around. Some of these old timers, they could walk a nugget right out of the sand. I've never been able to do that, but I've seen them do it. That's some of the giant cornflakes. Now that stuff on the left, do you just, just throw that away or is that actually... No, no, that's all, that, that's all going to go uh, to the laboratory. And you'll, you'll see uh, what goes on there pretty soon. Now what do you mean sterling gold versus river gold? You're going to see right now. You're going to see right now. Okay. This, is, uh, this, is, this is the fine gold. Okay, and then uh, and then she's going to go over. This is some of the coarse gold. You see that uh, larger nugget there is about this, uh, almost the size of a golf ball. Now that's river gold. That's what you'd find like in the Applegate River. You see how round that is and smooth that is. It's yeah, it's been traveled. It's been <laughs> beat up by the river and stuff like that. But you see how rough that is. That hasn't traveled hardly at all. That has formed right there, right literally on top of the Sterling Mine. 
much would that have weighed in ounces? Well, that particular pen right there. Big oh, that big nugget was was uh, God, was ounce and three quarter, ounce and a half, ounce and three quarter, something like that. Now this is the concentrating table. All that stuff that went through the screen that you asked about, and it was in the pan. Mm -hmm. Well, that big trash can held about 200 pounds worth of sand, and there's no way I'm going to pan that. <laughs> so we have a concentrating table, and that's what this is. You put it on this table, it's about six feet long, it's about four feet wide, and it's tilted down into one side. And depending on how you do the tilt is, is, is how, uh, how you recover the gold. And what we're doing here, you can see the blonde sand walking off to the side, but what you see here, here, this is all gold, and this is the blonde sand that's walking off to the side. And you get eight lines, that'll be running gold and when you get lines like this running gold for 10 or 20 minutes you're talking a powerful bunch of gold now this is all tailings here but this bucket here is going to catch this stuff and the black sand and that bucket is going to hold what we call super cons super concentrated gold and that goes into the laboratory How much material do you start with at the front end when you're doing whatever that process is? Well, it came out of a, out of that trash can that you saw the guy screening into. So like five gallons worth of material? Oh no, geez, about, about 200 pounds. So about about this much at the bottom of that trash can. So maybe, maybe three five gallon buckets. So by the time, and, and the time take, the timing for that, process to be happening here is, about, is, that, is that 20 minutes work 10 minutes oh work? no no that, that it probably takes you feed it literally a spoon at a time it probably takes an hour and a half to run those so you see the table is shut off there so that you could see so that you could see the gold dust and then the, the tailings oh well well So, what's running the shaker? Um, it's a wheel that has a weight on one side. Okay, so you're just using an oscillating wheel. Yeah. Oscillating yeah. Wheel. yeah. And was it electric or was it? It's electric. This, is a, this was, this was uh, uh, we rented a, a place to do this. This isn't on site. Okay. Uh, yeah. We, we had to set up an actual laboratory complete with a furnace and all the chemicals and stuff that it takes to, to uh, extract the gold. Now you see quite a bit of gold running down there. It doesn't take much of that to make an ounce. So our cleanups were anywhere from just under a pound to uh, two and a quarter pounds. A day, per day? Well, per, 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 we, we went by hours, so it would be per 12 hour shift. So that would be a two day run, a two six hour day run. So about a pound every two days? Yeah. Pound. How, many days, how many days were you able to keep that up? From what? September through December through well no mining months. mining generally started in December is when the spring started being active okay. again okay. and until uh, until early June and on rare now occasions what's, what's this? that that's the that's where the uh, the gold drops into we're still okay. getting black sand with it sure, okay. and that's what was built as the super cons super concentrates so you've concentrated this now one, two, three times. So the super concentrate is really the third pass. Well, the, the super the concentrate. Yeah, okay. basically. And then once it, once we have the super concentrates, then that's what goes into the laboratory. Okay. And, and you'll you'll see that that'll be coming up. Okay. And that's then exposed to chemicals. No, not yet. Okay. Some will be, some won't be. Okay. Did you say you collected? A yeah, a little over a pound of gold. Over a six yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> John, you got here late. There were I, I, I counted uh, five, six pieces of equipment, uh, uh, five under running at a time. Uh, uh, when I 
looked at I looked at that and I thought overhead, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, here to tell you. And like I say, it being old equipment, the expense of working on it daily, the pounds of welding rod. My God. Um, the main operation ran for about four or five years, and then after the price of gold dropped. We just kept up on a yearly basis for a couple of days just to pay the property owner's uh, property tax. As long as we paid the property tax, he was happy to let my equipment sit there. He got a cut of the gross, yeah. I do, but I'm not going to say. Yeah.